All right, so uh, first of all, I uh, welcome you all to suggest joined to on behalf of Economics Department, Digital College, for joining this uh, webinar on career in economics, career opportunity in economics. So first of all, let me just introduce myself. Uh, my name is Yimyana Rosikam, and uh, I'm a guest uh, faculty in Tetsu College Economics Department. And uh, let me just introduce you our today's presenter, that is uh, uh, Ms. Lili Chishi, Assistant Professor, and then, of course, uh, <clears throat> Dr. Deborah Department in Charge, and then Assistant Professor. Okay, so <clears throat> before we move on, let me just um, give you a briefing on order of the today's program. So, first of all, uh, we will have a PPT presentation by our Department in, in Charge, that is um, Dr. Deborah and then uh, he will uh, take us through the um, all this uh, the purpose of this um, uh, webinar and then um, after that it will be followed by a short speech by Mr. Uh, Shakoi Konyak and then he will share with us all uh, his experiences in the college and of course regarding the uh, economics as a subject and what he um, things about the subject of economics and um, which will be followed by a Q&A se session from the audiences also and uh, all your doubts and uh, uh, questions will be answered uh, at the end of the program. So um, without <coughs> further ado, I, give, I now give the time to Sir uh, uh, Debar Prada for his PPT presentation. Well, thank you, Mr. Yum Younger, for giving me the opportunity. Good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon, sir. Welcome to today's, <laughs> uh, welcome to today's session. Today, uh, I will be talking about the career opportunities in economics. So, so economics as a discipline, uh, first of all, I will introduce the subject. What are the things we study under this particular subject? Then I will be talking about the job opportunities related, associated with this particular uh, uh, discipline. So this is economics as a discipline. It is about 250 years old subject. And uh, it falls within the paradigm of social science. The first uh, book on this subject was written by uh, Adam Smith in the year 1700. 76 and the name of the book was the wealth of nation and this is the first book written documents uh, we have on economics as i told you it is one of the oldest social science subject and it is the only subject um, among social sciences okay where ph uh, where nobel prize is awarded. So what is this subject? This subject, economics, it is a study, this particular subject studies about production, distribution, and consumption of wealth in the human society. It studies the behavior of the people, consumers, and how this, how the individuals with the consumer make uh, be it consumer, producers, we make choice. So it is a study which helps us to make the best utilization of available resources. Now, why to study economics? 
Firstly, it deals with scarcity. We all know that uh, uh, resources are scarce. This particular subject helps us to understand the concept of scarcity and how the valuable limited uh, resources can be used optimally. It helps us to make decision. This subject, the knowledge of this subject helps us to make best utilization of available resources. This subject also teach us how to predict about the future. We all know that our economy is an underdeveloped economy. We have about 20% or 20% people living below poverty line. The job of economists mm -hmm. to frame policies and how we can solve this problem. So uh, the job of economist is to predict the unforeseen, maybe uh, to, put, to, to design policies and uh, by which we can, uh, we can have zero uh, poverty in the country. It studies about choices and trade-offs. So next, I'll be talking about the different branches of economics. As we all know that economics is, is uh, broadly divided into two major branches that is called microeconomics and macroeconomics. Uh, most of us, we are introduced uh, to these broad branches of economics in our 10 plus two economics uh, subject. So microeconomics, it is the study about uh, consumer choice, how a consumer or a producer uh, takes decision. Macroeconomics, on the other hand, it talks about uh, national income. It talks about aggregate of economic uh, of economic uh, phenomena. So microeconomic studies economic phenomena at a micro level. Uh, for example, how price is determined. This is a uh, price is determined for a particular commodity. It is a it is a subject matter of microeconomics. How how price level is determined in the economy? It is a subject matter of macroeconomics. Thus, inflation is one of the uh, parameters of uh, of uh, mac uh, of uh, of macroeconomic concept. So so does national income, etc. Next, we have other branches such as development economics, business economics. So development, development economics focus on the development process of uh, low-income countries. And uh, primarily, this particular uh, branch of economics uh, studies how we, can, uh, how, uh, how we can reduce poverty, inequality, unemployment, et cetera. And there are so many theories uh, that has been developed to, to study the development process of development and growth process of, of underdeveloped countries. Business economics, uh, this particular uh, branch uh, is mostly taught uh, to the uh, students of commerce, BBA and uh, MBA. So in this particular uh, branch of economics, uh, we study the application of economic theory and methodology, methodology, methodology to do business studies. Then we have uh, branches such as environmental economics. It, it is concerned with the economic impact of uh, environmental policies. We also have uh, international economics and international economics is the study of economic interactions between countries and it addresses issues like international trade, investment, 
exchange of goods and services uh, in layman term export and import of goods among countries and then uh, this uh, we have a specialized branch it is called econometrics and in econometrics what we do we use the uh, we use statistics mathematics models to verify economic theories this particular branch of economics uh, is used for for forecasting then we have health economics it is concerned with issues related to efficiency effectiveness uh, value and behavior in the production and consumption of health and health sector. We also have health economics, uh, 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 public economics. In case of public, econ public economics, we study about government policies through the lenses of economic efficiency and equi equity. So public economic builds on the theory of welfare economics and is used as a tool to improve social welfare. The concepts that are studied within public economies, public economy is government budget, revenue, expenditure, taxation, etc. Okay, next uh, we will be talking about uh, the skills that are required to pursue a career in economics. So to be a good economist, uh, one need to possess good knowledge of mathematics. Economics theories are built on, on mathematical principles. So knowledge of mathematics helps us to understand the concept of uh, uh, economics much better and uh, yeah, much better. Next, uh, skills required to uh, be a good economist is one should be aware of current affairs. Uh, it includes social, political issues, and and um, and the mind to uh, analyze these political, social uh, phenomena. Then one should have inquisitive mind. Uh, mind uh, we should be we should have. Research, uh, our efforts should be uh, research oriented and uh, uh, should have the ability to relate different aspect of the economy. Then we should have, we should have logical thinking. Apart from this, one need to have good communication skills, public speaking uh, to, explain, to, to explain the complicated uh, economic analyze economic analysis to the general public and to also to the people who doesn't know much of economics next i'll be talking about these uh, stages of higher education now Real economics wants to a student encounters uh, real economy when he pursues a course in uh, uh, economic major uh, at graduation level. Uh, if you uh, so so real uh, the study of uh, real economics begins uh, at graduation level. So one can pursue BA economics or BSc economics. It is uh, uh, usually a three-year course in our country, but some of the technical institutes in our country, they run a four-year degree course as well, such as IITs. Otherwise, it is a three-year course, and it is spread over six semesters. And in these uh, six semesters, as I told you about different branches of economics, uh, mostly, uh, uh, mostly these branches of economics are taught. Then one can pursue post-graduation. Post-graduation, it is a two-year degree, MA, MSc. Then we have, uh, one can go for research, that is a MPhil, 
it in some of the institute it is a one year or it is a two year course and then we have doctorate course which is all one once uh, someone pursue doctorate or uh, he gets phd and it is a three to five year course and then also uh, if anybody is interested they can go for uh, post doctorate uh, courses as well so i told you i already ex uh, explained about ba bsc and uh, uh, the eligibility for pursuing ba and bsc in economics is class 12 and uh, a student from any stream can opt for this particular course MA MSc, as I mentioned, it is a two year degree course and eligibility is BA, BSc in economics. MPhil, for MPhil, one need to complete master degree. And in some of the premier institute, admission is done on the basis of entrance test. And if someone pursues MPhil course, he is eligible for fellowship as well. Then we have a, a PhD course, as I mentioned, uh, it is a three to five years course full time and eligibility is a master degree or MPhil. And to pursue this particular course, Government of India, uh, MHRD and UGC, uh, they give fellowship and fellowship is quite handsome. It's in some of the institute, it is 31,000 per month. Then uh, these are some of the premier institute in the country where one can pursue which is MA, MPhil or PhD in economics. Uh, the premier one is Delhi School of Economics. Then we have Jawaharlal Nehru University. We have IGIDR Mumbai, Jadapur University, Hyderabad University, Madras School of Economics, ISI, Indian Statistical Institute we have in Kolkata, Delhi, and recently a branch was uh, it, it is also operating from Tejpur uh, University in uh, in Northeast Assam Northeast, and also we have IITs. Uh, some of the old IITs uh, they are doing uh, they are providing exceptional course in economics. Uh, Kanpur, Kharagpur, IIT Bombay, and then. Madras, uh, this and also IIT Guwahati, and then uh, other other institution. These are uh, even Indian Institute of Foreign Trade that's located in Delhi and Kolkata are known for their their uh, master degree course as well as research course. Now I will uh, come to the job opportunities that are open for an economist. So uh, I categorized uh, into three different headings. So one can pursue job in government sector, then job in, uh, job in academic institutions and corporate sectors. Let me start with job in the government sectors. So one of the prestigious job uh, that is associated with uh, with uh, economics is, uh, is is Indian Economic Service. Uh, so, if uh, uh, this uh, if somebody wants to join Indian Economic Service, then he has he or she needs to sit for uh, this particular exam conducted by Union Public Service Commission, uh, New Delhi, and. Uh, uh, if someone is selected uh, in this uh, um, exam, then uh, he will be working in this uh, institution. Uh, this is uh, uh, Government of India, uh, not block, not block. Uh, so basically, those who are uh, recruited under under this. Uh, prestigious service, they works with different ministries such as Ministry of Finance, Ministry of Commerce and Trade, uh, and yeah, the Ministry of um, uh, Industries, 
So, uh, and then starting salary ranges from 70,000 above and above. And uh, uh, eligibility is a postgraduate in economics, applied economics or business economics. Next uh, job, prestigious job, uh, uh, associated with, with economics is uh, one can one can work with RBI is a Bank of India, the premier bank in the country, the central bank of the country, and uh, uh, every year the Bank of India they they recruit uh, they recruit uh, 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 people and uh, uh, to to yeah Reserve Bank of India yearly every year they conduct uh, this uh, exam and uh, to work to appear for this uh, exam one needs to have a master degree in economics also um, uh, people with uh, MPhil and PhD are preferred and uh, the uh, if one can crack fix you will be working in Reserve Bank of India and uh, the annual salary starts from 12 lakh to 14 lakh. Then uh, other jobs that are associated with uh, economics, one can one can uh, be employed uh, as an employment officer, and uh, in the, in the union government, in the union government, and uh, uh, the the requirement is. Uh, a graduation in graduation and post graduation in economics. Apart from that, one can also uh, work in a NABARD, the prestigious bank uh, that works for the development of agriculture and rural development in India. So uh, NABARD recruits uh, at two different levels, A grade assistant manager and B grade manager. For A grade, the eligibility is graduation in economics uh, with 50% marks and age is limit is 21 to 30 years and the starting salary is around 60,000 rupees. And then for B grade, it's B grade manager, the eligibility is post graduation uh, in economics and uh, the sa starting salary is around 73,000. Rupees. Apart from uh, apart from the mentioned above mentioned job opportunities, all the banks in the country, all the commercial banks, uh, be it public sector bank or private sector bank, they uh, have one post exclusively reserved for economist, and the post itself is called economist. So you know, in India, we have many banks, and uh, almost we have 22, uh, more than 20 nationalized banks. That is all public sector banks, and also we have many uh, private banks. And uh, over the year, the number of branches and the operational banks are increasing. So there is enough scope for an economics uh, economic student to be absorbed in these institutions. Then uh, again, one more job that is associated with uh, with the uh, central government that is statistical investigator. And for this uh, uh, particular job as well, uh, economic graduates are preferred. So if somebody is selected under staff selection commission, that is a, a commission to recruit uh, recruit people. Uh, they will be working with MOSPI and two different, uh, specifically two different organization that is called NESO, National Sample Survey Organization and Central Statistical Organization. And then, as I told you, uh, the education eligibility is postgraduate degree in economics. From university or both, and uh, again the salary you can uh, see in the in the uh, screen. It's around seventy to eighty thousand per month. Uh, these are the different uh, job opportunities under 
under central government and uh, uh, yeah and then also the type of job and the pay scale is 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 being displayed now let's come to the job opportunities in nagaland so one can uh, one can work as a economic and statistical officer under uh, economics and statistics department government of nagaland then statistical inspector under economic and statistics department then we have district evaluation officer and planning assistants so these four jobs are exclusively reserved for economic Students and the eligibility being MA or BA in economics. Now, if somebody wants to um, wants to uh, join uh, as a teacher or want to have a career in academics, then uh, one can join as a subject teacher, also called PGT teachers, a postgraduate teacher in the high secondary schools. And eligibility is MA with fifty percent. So, if you want to be an economic teacher, then you have to have M economics with fifty percent mark and a B Ed degree. Now, if somebody wants to work in a college, then the uh, one needs to have a M Ed degree with fifty five percent marks, and he or she needs to uh, pass NET or SLAT exam. NET stands for National Eligibility Test. And select state level eligibility test. And if somebody dreams of working in a university, then uh, he needs to have MA, net select, or and PhD. Uh, just to glean, give you uh, a picture of higher education instead institute in the country. In India, we have about nine hundred sixty-seven. By now, I think it is around one thousand higher education institute in the country, and most of the universities have economics as a uh, subject. So you can understand if you want to work in higher education institutes, you have ample opportunities, and day by day, number of uh, institutes are increasing. And uh, in India, we have thirty nine thousand. Colleges, and I can assure you that more than half of the institute, uh, number of no, more, more than half of the college, they will have economics as a subject. So you can understand the importance of this subject and the job opportunities associated with this particular subject. Then you can also uh, work as a researcher. And uh, the, you can start as a research assistant, project coordinator, research associate, senior fellow, and uh, research fellow. And uh, in the bracket, I mentioned the eligibility uh, criteria as well. And uh, I can I can tell you that in India we have maximum number of research institutes uh, in social sciences, and uh, that are associated with economics. Some of the premier research institutes in the country are ICRIAR, New Delhi. Uh, this is a this is a research organization. Okay, uh, they 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 uh, provide uh, consultancy services. They undertake research projects, uh, uh, research project for for all uh, for clients all over the world. Then we have uh, National Council of Applied Economic Research. Then RIS, New Delhi. Asian Development Research Institute, Institute of Development Studies, Kolkata, Center for Development Studies, Trivandrum, and these are uh, other prestigious institutes. So, uh, all these are prestigious research institutes in the country where uh, a student of economics can be recruited. And then Apart from uh, this government job or academic, uh, in the corporate sector also we have uh, many, many uh, different many posts for economics, economic students. So a degree in economics or MA in economics may help you to find 
may, may help you to be may help you to get a job as a financial analyst in an in an organization business or business analyst data analyst is senior financial analyst research analysis so these are the jobs associated with economics uh, in the in the corporate sector then uh, if somebody dreams have higher ambition you can also work in this uh, some of the premier financial organization in the world world bank international monetary fund and united nation so lastly india is known to produce a uh, famous economist uh, these are name of these are some of the famous economists and uh, i want to uh, i want to inform you that two of our uh, economists they were awarded nobel prize as well professor amitya sen in the year 1999 and uh, recently so Abhishek Banerjee. They have their roots in, in India, and they worked in. They worked in. Uh, their work was related to India. So, with this, I would like to uh, conclude. Thank. You. Yeah, we'll have a question and answer session. Okay. Uh... Thank you very much, Sir Teva, Sir Teva uh, for your very helpful and insightful uh, presentation. So I hope everyone here has um, benefited a lot and then um, enhanced your knowledge regarding the scope of uh, economics as well. So um, anyway, um, moving on to the next uh, program, we have a short speech from Mr. Shakoi Konyak. Uh, he will share uh, his experiences at the college and then of course regarding this uh, economics subject so um, i give the time to him okay so First of all, I'd like to thank the faculty members for giving me the privilege to share experience with everyone. And secondly, I'd like to congratulate each and every HSSLC PASAL students for clearing the exam. Today, I'm here to share my experience in a few words. Well, would you believe me if I say that I didn't knew which subject to offer during the last day of admission at college. But after I opted for ECO, in my first year, all I was told by everyone was that I had enrolled myself in the toughest course of the university. The course indeed was a bit nervous, but not that difficult. It becomes difficult when we try to cope everything in the last minute. My first year experience was the best one. And one could score more marks as they are only simple match and statistics provided. In second year, it was a bit tough for me as it required more diligence and lots of practice, which I lack. However, third and fourth year they're more easy and understandable. Thinking about all such experiences and learning, I always think about a teacher who have always advised me with a quote. The more you try, the more experiences you get. And believe me, I have learned a lot and have been shown various scopes or ways to follow in days to come. So to say, my life has been pulled into the right path from a blindfolded illusion. Leaving aside, when we talk about economics, all that comes in our mind is mathematics and diagrams. But let me tell you, economics too deals with other things too, such as day-to-day -day currency activities, 
international trade, business, banking, etc. Lastly, but not the least, economics have always interested me when it comes to international trade, business, banking, as it helped us to update ourselves with current situation in all over the world. And it has always raised my willingness to learn more. But honestly speaking, all such things could not have been possible without the effort of teacher who are always ready to help the students in every situation, just like their own child. And trust me, with the facility provided by the Tetsu College, learning takes place in whole other level, which helps us to advance ourselves, not only in boogie knowledge, but also in every activity that we do. And the best thing about economics is that it gives you a lot of choice. The only thing one need to do is choose one and follow the right step to achieve it. With this, I'd like to wind up my sharing and all the best for your future. Make the right choice. Good luck and thank you. Okay, uh, thank you very much, Mr. Shakai Konyak. Um, so as we come to the end of our program, um, now we will have the time for this uh, Q&A session. So um, I give the time for, for the audience for your questions. If you guys have any doubts to clear, um, now is the time. If anyone has anything to ask regarding uh, you can either use the uh, message box or you can enter okay. Uh, I think you're uh, you're not audible. Okay. Uh, Sinjun, you you please uh, hold on a minute. All right. Um, you please take the next turn. All right. All right, so uh, he's in law, Dave has uh, asked one question. So he wants to know why economic subject is not so popular than the other subject in Naglin. Okay, uh, very interesting question. So <clears throat> I think this question has been lingering for a while, isn't it? Because uh, this question has been uh, there since our, uh, when we were students also in, you know, uh, it has been for uh, quite some time. But uh, I think uh, we don't really have the clear-cut answer to this. But uh, one reason is quite clear. That is, uh, I think it is because of the fact that uh, economics incorporates this uh, mathematics, right? Because uh, just uh, see, when students they choose this art stream after their matriculations, right? It is uh, because they uh, don't find this science and maths uh, subject interesting, right? So. <clears throat> Most of the people, uh, what they do is that they have this fear of mathematics, or um, they don't really uh, have this interest in mathematics. So, uh, since economics it involves, uh, uh, you know, a, a lot of mathematics, that's why uh, maybe that is the reason why people they try to avoid, uh, uh, in you know, uh, uh, in applying for this uh, economics uh, subject. That's why. That is what I think. But uh, in real sense, to be honest, I think economics, uh, this mathematics involved in mathem uh, you know, economics, uh, it is not really um, that difficult in a way, right? Because it doesn't really involve this advanced levels of uh, mathematics. It just involves this elementary sorts of uh, mathematics, like uh, you know, algebra and then calculus and statistics, right? Which are quite very, uh, if you just 
you know uh, understand the concepts and then you know uh, it, it is very helpful in understanding in detail the theories of economics right so uh, we there is also a saying that uh, you know uh, mankind has feared what they don't understand so i think that is one the reason to answer your questions Okay, uh, Senjo Do, uh, if you're ready with the question, then you can try again. All right, all right, that's fine. So in the meantime, uh, if there's anyone that would also like to ask or clear your thoughts, please um, do share your or pass away your questions. <laughs> Uh, Yam Yanga, uh, you will take that question or I will take that, uh, take this question. Uh, okay, fine, sorry, you take that question. Uh, okay, uh, economics okay. Had, uh, have two main branches, micro and macroeconomics. So which one is preferred? Uh, see, uh, it's, uh, when you study economics, uh, you cannot be knowledgeable, no? And you have, uh, uh, you will have uh, entire knowledge of economics by uh, studying only one particular paper. So you have to understand that all the papers are related. And if you see, and uh, uh, there are various paper, but then the foundation of economics is microeconomics. So if, you're, if you want to do, or if you want to make a career, and uh, almost all the theories, economic theories, no, are built on on microeconomics. So I don't think uh, you can prefer micro or macro or any other branches of economics. Rather, all uh, branches are related. Yes, of course, some paper, some branches are specialized branch. So if you want to say, you, if you want to uh, go for a particular, uh, like when we go for research or PhD, we 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 will focus on one particular topic. So in so if you are thinking of say for example research or PhD, then you can of course think of a particular uh, branch. Otherwise, you need to study all the branches. Fine. I think uh, I could answer your question. Any other question? If you have, please do type. Uh, if your voice is not, uh, yeah, network is not. Uh, uh, it's not good. What will be the benefit of uh, agriculture economics? Uh, Yam Yanga, you want to take? Uh, it's okay, sir, you can take. Uh, agriculture economics, uh, it is a part of economics only. It is a specialized branch and it studies the uh, different uh, crops uh, and then it is uh, it basically focus uh, uh, on agricultural sector how uh, see we all know that at some point of time our country was a uh, food uh, deficient like uh, our country could not produce enough food grains so this particular branch of economics focuses on uh, certain food grain production uh, uh, and uh, uh, yeah, yeah, certain food grain production, and it's related to uh, uh, how the agriculture productivity can be improved. And it also studies about uh, other agriculture related 
uh, activities uh, such as uh, uh, dairy farming, floricultures, and all. So, and also you have to understand that in India, um, more than 50% of the people are living in rural areas and their livelihood is dependent on agriculture. So, so in our country, if we have to uplift, okay, so it is very important that we focus on this particular uh, sector and agriculture is one of the branches which focuses on that particular sector, okay. So this is what I have to say related to agriculture economics. Anybody else, any other questions? What are the some special branches of economics? So, uh, so economic is a very dynamic subject, okay? And uh, it is related with, with all the other uh, social science subject as well. So you, have, you can have political economy, and then you can have energy economics, you can have research economics, okay, industrial economics. So these are uh, may, uh, these are some of the branches of economics, okay. Uh, special, yeah, these are all actually. When this particular, you know, say for example, energy economy, it it is related to the energy sector, okay. Uh, agriculture, as I told you, related to the agriculture, then industrial, uh, you have industrial economics, we have development economics, development, uh, yeah, development economics is related to the economic development of underdeveloped countries. And this, there are so many theories that has been developed, okay, model has been designed, how we can develop the underdeveloped countries, okay. Uh, uh, if you have other questions, please. See, commerce study and economics. Uh, commerce, uh, economies engulfs entire commerce within it. So economics, it is the study and practice of how people allocate resources okay and commerce is a, a specialized branch you can say okay that uh, 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 within the universe of economics and uh, uh, it is a specialized branch you can say and it has uh, uh, different dimensions it looks into the business aspect so if i have to say the business is the art of uh, uh, art of selling and uh, uh, selling goods and uh, good and and it's an, and it's in practice of practice how goods and uh, commodities are sold so uh, uh, economic is the universe and uh, commerce is part of it so commerce operate within the periphery of of economics this is what i can say So you have uh, other any other question? Uh, this industrial economics uh, deals with in, industrial economics uh, deals with industries. So if I have to give you an example, see in India in the nineteen uh, after independence, we did not had enough uh, enough uh, industries manufacturing units in the country. So, so the government of India designed, designed uh, economic policies. The government of India uh, started planning in the country, in the planning. And then we also have uh, 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 five-year plans and uh, industrial policies. So industrial, uh, uh, industrial economics deals with uh, it is a study and we, if we if we relate to india so it is all about uh, uh, all about studying the industrial phenomena designing economic policies that will help help uh, the growth of uh, industries in the country and uh, uh, this particular branch is uh, is is related to that 
and uh, it also uh, evaluates the needs of different uh, industries okay D different type of industries different sectors so this particular study the branch of study branch of economics deals with industry okay uh, we'll cover this so uh, in india um, uh, uh, the government of india uh, from time to time came up with new industrial policies and the latest being in the year 1990 and thereafter uh, of course we adopted liberalization privatization and globalization all this is related to the uh, all these policies related to industries all these policies are in the, related to industrial industries and it is a subject matter of industrial economics Okay, this is an interesting question. Which branch of economics to opt in masters uh, uh, if wants to pursue a career in teaching and in banking? Now, see, if you pursue your masters, then you have to study different branches of economics. You have to study micro, you have to study mathematics, you have to understand statistics, uh, your public finance. Okay, so everything. So uh, you cannot uh, study one single part, single paper if you want to part, uh, do your master. So masters, if you do your masters, then you will have 16 paper and then it will cover at least seven, eight branches of uh, seven, eight uh, different branches of economics. Okay. So this course is designed so that you have uh, you have understanding of different economic concepts and then you can relate okay when in later years when you want to develop a career or want to uh, you work in this uh, government organizations you can relate the concepts that you learn from different branches in reality you can design some policies okay so you cannot do uh, your masters in single paper but then rather you have to study multiple papers. And uh, if you want to uh, have a career in banking, see, uh, banking is not only about economics. It's, it's more than that. So if you want to uh, work in a bank, then you got to uh, have uh, uh, your maths right. You have to know, you have to have your communication, good communication skills. You have to have reasoning, uh, good reasoning ability. So when you sit for any banking examinations, uh, you have to know English, good communication English. Then you uh, should have uh, aptitude for mathematics. At least you should be uh, in a position to sell, solve simple mathematics, profit and loss, something like that. Uh, calculating interest, compound interest, all these things, and have the good reasoning ability. So if you are working in a club, so these are the requirements. But if you want to, uh, of course, the knowledge that uh, uh, you learn from economics in the paper, banking and finance, it, al it will also help you to understand the, the how a bank works and uh, yeah, how a bank functions. But if you want to have a career as a bank manager, so it is mandatory that you have to clear a paper on, on, on banking. And then uh, you have to have uh, knowledge about recent economic phenomena. You have to understand about the functioning of say RBI, other financial institution, institution. So this part, if you have a degree in economics, this part you will learn uh, while you do, while you pursue your PG or a graduation in economics. But uh, other things such as uh, uh, mathematics and say, for example, reasoning ability and then uh, knowledge about management, these things you have to, you have to learn by yourself. So just an economics degree, okay, may not help you to get a job in, job as a bank manager, okay. Of course, the knowledge that you will be that you will be gaining 
by uh, pursuing a course in uh, economics, it will help you. Maybe it will help you say 25% of your name, but other 75% you have to you have to learn by yourself. Okay. Now uh, the best university. So you have only one good university. Okay, in Nagaland. Uh, so it's basically Nagaland University. But then in Northeast, if you say, what are the good institution in that uh, case, I can tell you that we have IIT Guwahati, and they do have master degree course as well. And not exactly in economics, but uh, uh, masters in, masters in uh, development studies, you can pursue that course as well. And uh, IIT Guwahati, they do have PhD in economics. So somebody, uh, uh, wants to wants to yeah study in the north northeast i think this is one of the premier institute also uh, northeast and hill university shillong is one of uh, good institute and then mizoram university is also uh, other than guwahati university so these are some of the some of the uh, good institute to pursue uh, higher education or ma uh, ma economics in northeast I hope I'm clear. Okay. Uh, so I hope um, everyone is. Hello. Yes, you are audible. Okay, okay, okay. So I hope everyone is clear with your answers. Uh, 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 questions and doubts um, if there's anyone uh, else that you'd like to ask any questions SPR, PO, Navard, mm -hmm. I see it's all uh, depend on your choice okay nowadays uh, banking has become no job of a banker is not that, is not that easy and uh, uh, I, I'm sure you must have uh, seen people, no? Uh, maybe you have family members working in bank as a PO. So it's not that easy, no? Banking hour, it starts as something uh, eight in the evening, nine, something like that. So uh, if you are talking about the life, okay, then I think uh, central government job under SSC that is, uh, is much better. Because mostly this central job, it's it's for nine to five job, and uh, uh, yeah, I think that's much better than maybe SBI officer or PO and Nabard also. It's not that easy. Uh, the jobs are good, but then working hour and then now uh, there is some stress associated. So uh, that is the problem. Maybe so it's depend on your choice. Uh, what do you want? Okay. Otherwise, uh, uh, central government job is much better. Thank you. Any other question? Okay, so uh, any any more further questions from the audiences? Okay, so. It seems that uh, there are no further questions from the audience, right? Okay. All right. <clears throat> so if there's no further questions, then uh, uh, we'll just uh, wind up here for today. And uh, so I thank you all for uh, 
attending this uh, short webinar for this careers and uh, opportunities in economics. And uh, hopefully all of us has benefited from uh, this session. All right. And uh, once again, I congratulate uh, for two stock students who have just passed out your class 12. And I wish you all uh, all the best in your uh, future endeavors. So thank you. Thank so you. anything that you would like to add? No, uh, I just want to thank everyone, everyone for uh, attending the webinar. Uh, I think uh, this uh, webinar will help them to make uh, a choice, okay, to choice uh, to choose economics. Uh, that's all. Okay. All right. Okay. Thank you all, and I hope you all have, and I wish you all a good day, and have a great time.